gotcha. All right, we're good. All right, the boxing source checking in, and we got uh, a previous uh, guest uh, here. You know, we've spoken with him before, uh, before uh, his fight against Michael Hunter, but now we got him here uh, before his fight against Kubrat Pulev, and that is the man, brother Jerry Boris. What's going on, my man? How you feeling? How you feeling? Thank you guys for having me again, man. Blessings to you guys. Oh, no doubt, no doubt, man. I know you got this big fight coming up here against Kubrat Pulev. Of course, he's a yes, multiple-time world title contender, has been, you know, ranked highly in, you know, the IBF rankings for some time and other rankings are there in the heavyweight division. And so you know how much is in the line here for this particular fight against Kubrat Pulev because, you know, you get a win, you're, you're right in there in the mix as far as, like, uh, being a contender for a world title. Yes, sir. One person standing in the way. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. And, uh, you know, like you were saying uh, in the press conference, you, you, you're just there, you know, you just want to get in there and get the win. You're not saying that, you know, you want to be all flashy and, and things like that and say, oh, I'm going for the big knockout. You know, I, I'm just there. Yeah, you know, that's yeah. why I had to correct the guys. Like, you know, <laughs> when, when I, well, see, well, that's why, I had to, and like I told them, I'm going for the knockout in the sense of I'm going to do what I do best, which is box. If it comes, then that's what I'm going to take. You know what I mean? But I, I never, if you look at my fights, people complain because I don't go for the knockout because I am a good fighter. So, you know what I mean? I don't have to go for the knockout to beat him, but I was saying in this fight, I'm not going to leave it up to judges. Whether it's just dogging him out more, throwing more punches, uh, capitalizing wherever he doesn't capitalize. I'm going to make sure that it's definitive, whether it's knockout or by 12, by 10 rounds. I want to be sure and definitive that I am going to get the win w without without any hesitation. Yeah, gotcha. Now, of course, you know, you're you're fairly active there in, in you know, the heavyweight division. You know, you had your last fight uh, there in uh, December this year. But going up against uh, Kubrat Pulev, who, you know, had his last fight against Anthony Joshua for at the time the unified heavyweight titles. And, you know, we tried to, you know, make him, uh, you know, a good account of himself in there, but, you know, he eventually did get stopped. But did you see, like, anything in that particular fight that says, hey, you know, I see something there on Kubrat Pula. You'll be able to see yeah, he got, his, he got his heart taken. Look at the fight. Uh, and that's the thing about it. Certain fighters, they get defeated. You get what I'm saying? Guys like that, they have an opening because, see, that when I talk about resilience, when you press me, when you got me in the corner, I'm rock. It don't matter. When you got a guy like Pula, he turns his back on a guy like Joshua. And, and that's nothing, not taking away anything from Joshua. But for you to turn, I mean, that you don't want to fight. You know what I mean? Uh, guys break wills. Like, you got <laughs> You, you could break people's will or like you, you got to break my jaw. You got to break like you're going to have to hurt. Me. Like, you know what I'm saying? You're going to have to discontinue me to fight. So I feel like that's the only that, that that's the difference. Uh, guys like Morat Pulev, you beat these guys, you take advantage of them. They're done. You know, me, you're going to have to find an outsource because if you can outbox me, I'm going to slug you. If you can outslug me, I'm going to outstep you. So the thing with me is you have to be adaptive. And if you can't adapt to every single thing that I'm doing, you're going to be out back. And that's Pulev. No we're all human so <laughs> i mean basic principles stepping i mean you know the same thing i've had since day one in my fights so just common principles then it's going to take care of itself yeah you know like you said i mean it doesn't matter you know what the situation is you're always going to adjust you know like you said if you're gonna they're gonna brawl you're gonna outbox them if they're gonna box you out brawl them so you know you pretty much have like every tool in the shed for for your opponents to where they they won't be able to adjust to them exactly yeah, yeah. Now, um, you know, wanted to go back into the last uh, thing there with the Trilliverse. You know, you were there against Michael Hunter. You were you were pretty much like boxing his tail off. Uh, you know, looked like over the course of that particular bout. And then, you know, it goes to the scorecards and then it like reads a draw, man. And it's like, yo, this this happening again. Like you had the thing with Zelay Zang yeah. and then now here against Michael Hunter. I'm like, oh man, yo, like come on. What yo, it's like almost you couldn't really uh you know, catch a catch a break with that though, but you know, it didn't really, you yeah. know, kind of like break your will. You, you know, you're still out there, still very hungry, and you got this fight here against Cool Brad Pulev that gets you right back in the uh, heavyweight mix. I got a reset mindset, to be honest with you, and uh, I think that's one of my biggest things. Even when I got so like 
when I got a job at Zing Zay Lee, how I pop back up and go right back into it. So in Louisiana, we call it in Louisiana, we call it not having no mind, like which is basically we call it going retarded, which is not being scared of the consequences. So me growing up, how I grew up, being raised how I was raised, I never was really scared. Like, so whatever I did, I had to, I had a consequence. Like for real, my mom went, my dad, my grandma, so like whatever I did, I had a consequence. So as I got older, it's kind of like, <laughs> if you can't whip my ass, I'm not scared of your consequences. So with a guy like Zing Zay Lee, my, it doesn't matter. Like after the fight, my mind is reset. My dad, my dad calls me after the fights, like, why aren't you mad? Why aren't you upset? It's, I'm on to the next fight. Like I know what I have inside of me, so I don't really trip. Does it get does it get a little frustrated? Yeah, sure. I'm not the type to dwell on some shit for 10, 20, 30 minutes for what? <laughs> like once the score cards are rare, once the job, you know what I'm saying? There's no need for me to go home, cry on my pillow, cup like for what? It, 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 the universe isn't gonna change. So once the decision is made, you just gotta reset and go. You know what I mean? And and that's how it is. As soon as it as it happens, it's just all right, where's the next fight? Who we fight next? That's it. You know, like you said, uh, you know, you you had the stuff where you know you got. Uh, I guess, of course, we we all we all got weapons by our mama or your know, grandma. So yeah, of course, day, you know, gotta be the belt, belt, the, 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 the stick, you know, a branch or whatever it is. So you know, if you're able to take all that, it really doesn't matter like what these other fighters you, you know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know? like it ain't nothing. Going getting older, it ain't nothing, man. Yeah, so I'm gonna be feeling. And, uh, you know, you talk about your uh, background there in Louisiana and, you know, we uh, were chatting a little bit about, um, you know, like have, being a fan of like LSU or, you know, you have LSU out there, you know, in Baton Rouge or uh, Southern University out there also as well. So it's like you, you got that whole uh, Louisiana style, you know, kind of like mixed in, but also you residing in Newport mm -hmm. News, Virginia. And you in know, Virginia, you know exactly. The, background of Newport News too. So it just gives you a good little mix of, uh, you know, styles and, and, and the character too, you know, that you that you bring to the ring or you bring to, you know, whatever you go to, whether it's press conference, weigh in or whatever. I see the best of both worlds. I see the best of both worlds. I definitely, Louisiana and Virginia definitely taught me individual personality tips and they taught me life traits for sure. I, I definitely, they're both complete opposites but they're very same in the network of the people, the way that things are moved and operated. So yeah, yeah, but Louisiana is definitely a home. I, we, we, like, we, we could sit on my aunt's roof and, and look at like a Southern game, like no lie. Like, I mean, like she, she's that close. So yeah, as far as sports though, and just home in general, Louisiana is like, it's bananas for me, for real. I, I, I probably can go to Louisiana, probably people will most likely notice me more than probably anywhere else, honestly, because it's my birthplace. So this is my first home, so. Oh, well, so he was like right around the corner from Mubford Stadium out there. You know? Right there, like Garfield Ave, all that. We're right there. Oh, we're all right there. Us, Lil Boosie, like it's it's a whole it's a whole little deal, man. Yeah, we all right there. Yeah, gotcha. Now, you know, going back to, you know, you being uh, currently residing in Newport News, we did, you know, talk about that before, uh, before your previous fight. Um, you know, how is it like, you know, being out there in Newport News and, having the, you know, ability to move around and, you know, get up to the D.C. area or, you know, maybe as far as like Baltimore, as far as like getting in work or going up to New York to get in work? Uh, so I trained in Ashburn, which is like right outside of D.C. Yeah. Um, we try to get as much work as we can. It's not always like that. Uh, so we may do what we got, um, but we make it happen. You know, we have some guys that we use regularly. But as far as like just without name dropping the, the big boys in, in, in any division, but especially our division, they're not trying to spar. So, I mean, the guys that I have called top of the divisions, world champs, they don't want to work. So uh, you kind of got to find really good amateurs that are come ups or either really good, you know, prospects that are, you know, five or six and no. So uh, we, we do our homework and, you know, we, we get guys that we need. But, um, yeah, it's, it's pretty scarce. Ain't nobody really trying to scrap, to be honest with you, man. Nobody really want to work. No, nobody wants that. No. Nobody wants to get pushed nowadays. It's too, it's too hard. Yeah, I feel you. It's easier to get the easy hardly anybody, hardly anybody wants to get pushed out there. And, and being out in Ashburn, man, I'm like, yo, that's over there by, you know, the other airport. And I'm telling you, like, even for me, it'd be going to be man, no hard to go out there. So, so I mm -hmm. know I know it'd be like troubling for, for a lot of uh, other fighters to get out there, you know, in order to get some work. But, 
you know, for you, that that pretty much is where you're in your comfort zone. You're able to do, you know, whatever you want to do, and you you come out there very, uh, you know, confident and very good, or feeling very good after you know each time you work out there in that gym. I I stay true to boxing for real. For real. Um, my success has been. My success has definitely been pregnant more so on me staying true. Uh, a lot of guys talk, but they don't really do. Um, I do a lot when people don't see me. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I, I, I wake up in the middle of the night. My wife will tell you, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. My wife, she's not going to see me in the bed at that time because I'm not going to be in the bed. I'm going to be running. I'm going to be doing something like, you know what I mean, drop my kids off to school. I go back to the gym right after that go back to the gym that evening. So like, even when I'm home, uh, besides me being a family person, I'm, I'm in the gym three times a day because I promised myself that that's all I was gonna do once I, once I, you know, once I made it out. So um, I, I pretty much pride myself on just trying to stay true to the sport and it's worked out. I mean, I've stayed loyal. I've, I've done what I had to do. And every fight I've not only gotten better and progressed, but I've actually gotten bigger fights, bigger chances, more money. So. I feel like as long as I keep doing the right thing, the universe is going to keep on responding and rewarding me. Gotcha. And you know, you had this uh, opportunity here on Trillerverse, part of the Triller Fight Club, uh, there against Kubrat Pulev, uh, there. And like I said, it's a real big fight here in the heavyweight division. Uh, you know, co featured about there for uh, Sergey Kovalev and Tervel Ter Pulev. But we're definitely ready to see you there in action uh, here come Saturday night in Inglewood, California, in the uh, forum over there in Inglewood. So definitely looking forward to see you there in action there once again. That's right, Jerry Forrest, uh, get ready for a Saturday yeah. night. You know, big ups to you for taking time to speak with the Boxing Source once again, and we'll see you there on Saturday night. Blessings, blessings not. Thank you guys for having me, truly. No doubt.